Uh, One Punch Man, Season 2, Episode 2, Human Monster. Um, let's just talk about this episode, let's go through it. So first of all, uh, get the opening, I like the opening still, what a surprise, I've seen it quite a few times at this point, and such a minor detail they've added is like, in the first opening it was like a, it was like a little drawing of Tatsumaki near the end just before it's the group shot, and then this time it was Child Emperor, and if they do stuff like that, it's enough to keep like some fucking weirdo like me super excited, so I'll be like, oh my god, look at that gay child, oh, you, you know, uh, let's just get into the, in the actual episode, so, we finally get to see Garo in action, honestly, I thought it was done very well. Um, I think the main thing I would say for this scene more than anything that really makes it what it is, is the music. And I've talked about it last time, but the audio is what's going to give um, a big advantage over the manga for this, because obviously, you know, there's no audio in a book. And what it did, like, Garo's theme was really good, and like, I can only, yes, it's definitely his theme as well, because it's, it's we heard at the beginning, heard at the end, maybe it's gonna be a light motif in the future, who knows, but for now, it's his theme, and it's done really well. It's the kind of theme I expected to hear from King, to be honest, uh, but we didn't necessarily, but I, we don't know about that still, but the choir and the guitar made those scenes just a lot better, just like, obviously, you know, we get to see Garo in full display, he's attacking, he's not attacking heroes and villains, he's attacking humans, and obviously, you know, um, they, they do things, obviously, because I have to get around some censorship and stuff, so obviously, you know, first of all, like, he does fully, like, obviously damage, uh, Heavy Tank's arm, but it's when he rips off Blue Fire's arm, I was like, I suppose it gives you that moment to realise, like, as, uh, someone who's, um, watching it back, ah, uh, words, watching it back, the Blue Fire scene, uh, I, I think it makes it a bit more gruesome, because you have to put it together, like, wait, oh, Oh, we just did that, didn't he? And, like, obviously, you know, they can't get away with, like, showing blood, so they're, like, they, they alter colours and stuff to, to make it better. And then, obviously, you know, all the villains are like, yeah, you go games! Like, actually, no. No, you're all gonna get hurt as well. I'm gonna beat you all, too. And I thought that was really well done. Uh, like, I I thought, the I thought like, how quickly he beat them, to be honest. I was like, that's maybe a bit too fast for me. Like, if, um, Kusich goes under the table to give him a phone call of what's gonna happen, uh, and then next thing goes, everyone's, uh, unconscious. But, of course, like, it's to show how much of a, how much of a badass Garo is really. Like, in that instant, he took down everyone in the room. And he's, like, also, he makes the comment of saying, I'll be back in six months, because I don't, I can't take on this class here. It's not at this point. But I'll be back in six months to, to defeat you, to defeat you all kind of thing, which, uh, I don't know if he knows about when the prophecy is going to be, but he also, but as we know, uh, the God Level Threat is supposed to appear sometime in the next six months, which kind of builds up, you know, is Goro going to be this God Level Threat? Um, but, that's all we kind of really, there isn't a lot to say about Garo, just like, I like I said, I think the theme song that he has really made those scenes work for him. Like, it was just, it was the audio, and I loved the use of audio in the Garo scenes at the beginning, and at the end as well. And like, he looked really good too, I gotta say that, Garo looked really good, I thought he looked really good, I was really impressed with what he did. Uh, you know, like, just even just like the slight face changes and everything. Um, his voice has grown on me too. Meanwhile, we go to Fubuki, and... No, not just yet. Uh, yes, Fubuki's obviously, you know, she's, she is basically kind of like a mafia boss, and this is how she runs the B classes, because she's obviously there saying, like, you join me, or you die kind of thing. Well, not you die, but, you know, she's going to break you so you don't work as a hero again. Before this, though, obviously, you know, we get the scenes, like, we get that funny little interaction between Saitama and Janos, I love it, where, like, like, uh, he goes, you're B class now, and just, like, kind of telling everyone where Saitama is, and then he goes on to talk about, like, you know, oh, you might even have a fan club, please. Not even you have a fan club. So actually, I do have a fan, fan club. He's like, really? You do? <laughs> Just that small moment. And then, obviously, we go to the General Sonic fight, and then they go off. And, like, you know, it's a, it was a really hype moment. I was, like, as a as a fan of it, I was just super excited to see everything go down. Because I loved these chapters when it took down. And I loved, basically, a lot of this. Because it is a very Saitama-centric episode. What a surprise. Oh, my God. A story about the main character. Who would have thought? Um, but what I mean by this is... It was, we see Saitama in full force, we see all the great things about Saitama here, we see, obviously, his strength, we see his, like, simplicity, which brings comedy, and we see his values of what it is to be a hero, which I adore. Um, which is, yeah. So, obviously, they go, no they go knocking, um, Saitama answers the door, uh, I felt like this bit, uh, well, the joke of this more than anything is, they're trying to threaten Saitama. Saitama's not having anything, because we know who this guy is. They don't, and it's played quite well, I guess, because uh, obviously, you know, she's, you know, because she's like, join me, and, uh, you know, you, you'll you be strong, and you'll and you'll have friends, and everything like that, and then the moment she goes, and this is kind of where you see the true nature of Fubuki, she goes out to, and like, the moment Saitama says, no, I'm not joining you guys, she's like, right, break his bones so he never works as a hero again, which is already not a very heroic act, and then, of course, we just get that cut of Saitama punching, and then we get the fight between Saitama and Fubuki, and I thought this was done pretty well, uh, especially because it has one of my favourite 
separate speeches in One Punch Man, and I thought this was done alright. Um, like, I just love that whole speech that he gives of like, you know, it, it what, like, this is one of the reasons, like, I love Saitama for a lot of reasons, but one of them is his dedication to heroism. He, he loves being a hero, he adores helping people, like, he, like, he's got key values as a hero, and this is what they are to him, you know, like, you try and, like, you tried to threaten him, and you tried, and that was an insult to him, of what it is to be a hero, for trying to go this way, you know, like, and that speech is brilliant, you know, a hero is someone who faces an enemy, whether there's a hundred of them, or whether there's one of them, you know, like, it's not about, it's not about having allies, it's about doing the right thing. Factions, newbie crushing, none of that matters when it comes to being a hero. Don't look down on heroes, you moron, or you jerk in this case. And it was just, it's such a great bit, I love that speech so much. Saitama's just preaching the truth, and one of the weird things is they didn't show his whole face. I don't know why they didn't show his whole face. Just just show his whole face, it's fine. And then Fubuki's obviously going at him with everything, and Saitama is an unstoppable force at this point, of course, like, because he's, he's Saitama. Um, and one of my favourite things about this whole scene, more than anything, is obviously, you know, she's at her wit's end, like, nothing she can do can stop Saitama, so she pulls out, like, a little box cut knife, and she goes to, and she goes to slice him, right? She's, she is at, like, the bottom, because, as we learn about Fubuki, you know, she is, she has always been in her life, never had the chance to become the best at what she, what she's special at. Psychics, her older sister is Tatsumaki, who very clearly outclasses her. Um, in terms of heroes, then, yes, she's the top of B class, and that's why she stays top of B class, I suppose, because she can feel better about herself and be like the best at something in this case um whereas obviously she's scared to move up to a class because of like you know the, the disciples atomic samurai ei and bushi jewel akomatachi and of course a my mask and so she's never had this opportunity to be the best so of course when saitama shows up someone who should be below her and is outclassing her in every way she is literally in tears if you look back she's got tears in her eyes she is she's hurting from this like this knowledge and how does saitama react to this kind of stuff <laughs> he isn't paying attention <laughs> I just love, like, she's having, like, this big emotional moment, and Saitama's like, What are Jeros and Sonic doing? Come on! And, like, just, and then he knows on their fight, and then he ends up protecting Fubuki, and, um, a little joke that I think they should have put back in, which I don't know why, like, obviously, Jeros is like, Oh, Saitama, so I see Blizzard came and met you, and she obviously decided to fight you, and look how the tables turned on you, and, like, I swear when Jeros did that originally in the man, he had, like, a little smile, he's like, Look what you have, look what happened to you. That's my master for you. And then, like, we get to that, and then, obviously, you know, we get that great moment of, like, you know, the whole area's damaged except for behind Saitama, and it's just, like, it's literally where his shadow was. It's all intact, and Fubuki's fine, everyone's fine like this, and then, you know, we, this, and then we get to the General Sonic fight, and honestly, with the General Sonic fight, I think it was a great way to show the feats of Genos and Sonic, because they've always been, kind of been compared to Saitama, because they've only really, like, I suppose you look at this, they can, they lose a lot, or they have undefined, or, um, unknown endings to fights, things like that, and then especially when they fight Saitama, they lose. So, it is a great way, this was a great way to show to everyone, like, the strength of these two guys, because they are S-Class level for a reason. They're very powerful, they're very fast, and they're great. And, like, you know, I think Fubuki was the perfect measure, because Fubuki's really strong, uh, like, compared to an average human. Like, obviously, his psychic abilities give this, um give his kind of feats, but when they start speeding up, you know, she can't even see them, and she's incredible, like, you know, she's like, I, I can't see these guys. These are these are pros. These are I these are S class heroes for a reason. Like these are S class level heroes. And you know, there's that great moment obviously where Genos accelerates. Oh, the acceleration was beautiful. I've gotta be honest, I loved the acceleration. It looks so good. Um, just obviously, like, the thing is, accelerate, right? They only say it this one time because whenever Genos gets upgrades in the future, he just gets faster and stronger and better in every way. Because that's how we see how upgrades work. Um but what they know, he's never used Accelerate again, so when I, this was the only time I've ever seen him say Accelerate at least, so when it goes into the, I was like, is it just like, you know, like him actually speeding up? Because the chapter when this happened was cool, so was called Accelerate, so when it actually happened I was like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, and then he just goes, Accelerate, and I was losing it. Like, the amount of times, honestly, throughout this episode, I was like sitting in my seat, but like, I was trying to like, I was trying to focus on the episode, and I was just like, I couldn't keep my arms still, so I was like, Ugh! And then it would just go back to it, because I, I was like super excited to see all this stuff actually happen. Happened. The accelerate was done great, but the downside of the accelerate is because the whole thing of that fight, the whole thing of the accelerate more than anything, is the top knot. Because the top knot in Japanese society, I believe, especially like in like warrior culture, I know with samurais, like they their top knot is quite precious. So I don't know if it's the same with ninja, but the whole point is, you know. Genos was basically trying to make Sonic look like a fool in terms of speed. Like the whole point of obviously Sonic's very pride has got a lot of pride about his speed, but he's like, is this this idiot trying to think he's faster than me? And then he's like, you had some lint in your hair, so I got it off, and he tears off his hair. Um, 
and he drops it on the ground, but they don't actually show the top of his head, which I think was the downside of this. They should have shown the top of his head, because like that would have completed the whole scene, so people are like, oh, he got his hair, damn. Like, that's that's something they should have done. I, th I think they missed out on that, at least. And then, of course, you know, something actually showed, I'm actually not, I'm actually a lot faster, goes in for the fourfold funeral, and Saitama protects him, um, and now I can actually talk about something I love. Which, um, because I'm going to have to talk about something I didn't really like. Let's talk about the thing I didn't really like first. Uh, so Genos is down, Saitama and Sonic are about to have their fight, and obviously he goes in with a tenfold funeral, you know? Like a scattered flash slash, I think he called it. Um, and, you know, Saitama was like, I'll take you on with everything you've got. And Fubuki and Genos are like, you know, like, that's such an extreme skill. Like, like, to create multiple copies is great. However, and then Saitama counters with the serious series, serious consecutive sidesteps, which is a great move. I just didn't like how they pulled it off in the in the show. Let's turn on the light. Time to drop some knowledge. Oh god, the adjusting of colours. Oh. So, with this move in particular, I was really looking forward to seeing how this would play out because I loved this move when it originally happened. It was it was insane. But like, obviously, the last time we saw Sirius Sirius was when he fought against Boros and he and he smashed the uh, the Claps from Star Roaring Cannon in half and spread the clouds across the planet. It was it's incredible, right? But I think of the downside to it was there was no breathing room when I was thinking about this because obviously it makes sense. Uh, let me explain my point first, and I'll and then I'll justify the other side for it too. So I think it was over too fast, and I get that was to do with pacing, and I feel like part of the joke was lost there because in particular, like with the serious series, as any kind of big feat, you need breathing room to see the scale of this kind of attack. You need to see what this attack can actually do. So you have that in when you first see the Captain Star Roaring Cannon against Serious Serious Punch, because obviously you see that it split the sky, and you see how it's obviously deflected the beam. You get to see like you get a moment to breathe in and take a look. At what actually happened. You see it in the manga for this as well, because obviously the difference between reading a story and watching a story is like a reading you can read at your own pace, and you can take in for something as much as you want. So you can say about how many clones there are and take in, that is a lot of people there as long as you want to. Whereas in this, uh, when it was done, I was like, I was just like, it was over a bit too quick. And there were some things I did like about it, so the, like, it got me hyped in the right way, because he's like, serious, serious, and the foot went down into the ground. I was like, oh, here we go. And I was like, oh, it's it's over, okay. Um, but I will say, uh, to in defence of this, though, like to fight argue for the other side, it is supposed to be incredibly a fast moment because he wants to put Sonic down. He wants to show his speed, and this is the whole point of this more than anything. So I can't argue that too much about it because it is speed. It's very speed focused, so it does work. But I think a joke that was lost is obviously like what happens in the manga is you see like you get a better look at like Saitama basically rushing through. Uh, the multiple Sonics, and you just see his very simple face, and it's done very well. It's very funny, um, which is sh that's the only thing that's kind of a shame to me is like, oh, that bit was lost because like season one did it as well. This isn't like season two ruined this because of everything. No, season one is guilty for this as well. Um, I, I, that's probably the main thing to me. But from generally what I've seen, uh, I haven't watched any videos or whatever. Uh, people think, but generally, people really like the series series, so I am very much in the minority because I'm like, I didn't like how they did this thing, you won't punish me, blah, 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 and like, everyone else, I think, seems to like it, so it's just me, and I'm happy to accept that. So let's talk about something positive now to follow that up. The stills in this episode, some of them were so good, it looked just like out the manga. Like, they literally, and maybe that's what they did, they literally tore a page out, they drew over it to perfection, and they coloured it in, and some of them looked Beautiful. Like, Saitama's intimidating face was on point. It was so brilliant. You had Sonic's shock face, you had Fubuki's shock face later on when she learns about Saitama and King. It was all done that, those, those, and it sounds weird to say the best part of the, like, the episode, uh, <laughs> that's a horrible thing to say. The best part of the episode artistically was when everything wasn't moving. But it's true, it did look fantastic. I don't mean this in a negative way, it looked really good. Yeah, obviously uh, Sonic's gone off and then Fubuki's now very interested in who Saitama is because he's not normal. And then she, we learn about her past with all the espers and everything like that. And, you know, she's like, what, what's the problem with this? And obviously Saitama's very much like, you can do it if you want, Fubuki, just don't get me involved. Um, and obviously we learn about, obviously, the higher classes, like, uh, the higher rankings of the A class, which is the Freed Subs, Atomic Samurai, and the Mind Mask. And we get the scene with the Mind Mask, which I forgot about, but I enjoyed because the whole point in this scene is to kind of show, like, I took it at this point, this isn't a spoiler, this is how I saw it then, um, as him setting up as an antagonist towards Saitama, because he is his opposition. Saitama, despite being incredibly strong, 
uh, is incredibly simple looking and is hated in the association. They established that well in season one. We've obviously, you know, all the people thinking that he's just taking credit for the S class uh, opponents. Like he's taking credit from the S class heroes and the higher ranking heroes when in fact he's obviously doing most of the legwork. Whereas in, in response to this, and my mask is drawn in a lot of detail a lot of the time he's drawn very like you know he's very, he's made to he's designed to be good looking because that's his name sweet mask and underneath and we see for the first time what's underneath the sweet mask and there's a brutal side to a my mask because you see the moment where obviously you know he's like oh here's the caveman supon i'm about to take ivan or to take you in i'm not gonna take you in though he swept the leg and a one inch punch bam we see the strength of my mask and how does everyone respond to this instead of like you know it's quite a brutal scene but all the girls are screaming a my mask summer which is like the highest you can pretty much go um they love in it they're just you know there's nothing but praise for him you know and I like that um, I like it. it was done really well because he's been set up as he's the opposite of Saitama and Saitama's hated my mask is loved Saitama's simple he's detailed but they're both strong and there's similarities and there's differences so they are that kind of thing as heroes and it's going to be very interesting the day when these two actually meet up um, and then we get obviously you know she's like you <laughs> like you get a good grasp of her knowledge of strength because she's like oh but because she goes on to go on about like you know oh we've even got like uh even above my sister there's the s-class hero king who's the strongest man on earth and the mysterious blast and the moment she said that you're like okay you don't really have a true grasp on what strength is then love because obviously we see this but like this is what it is to an average person you know they have a lot of faith in these higher classes then king walks through the doors like hey jam my game saitama and then that pretty moment where saitama's scared to tell king about the detail like he's like i'm about the game what was that just that was done really well, and Fubuki's like, maybe if I hang around this guy, I'll learn what it is to be strong as well. And then Genos obviously has the, I has a really good line as well, where he's like, you know, it isn't, you know, Saitama is strong, so the strong naturally are drawn to him. The weak people are naturally drawn to him because he's strong, and like that's Genos' obs observation. Obviously, he's a big fan of Saitama too, but it makes sense. And then. Pretty much the last thing I've got to talk about is the Hero Association because we find everyone's finally learned the names of Saitama and Genos. Genos for his um, for his never-ending offensive abilities against forces of evil has been given the name Demon Cyborg. Meanwhile, Saitama's bald as a cape, so he's called Bald Cape. That's my boy. To be fair. That is a much kinder name than what they could have given him because they based it off what Genos does. If they based it off what they think Saitama does, they could go like, oh look, here's the guy who rips off all the other heroes and takes credit for it. Oh, here he is, the bald scumbag. That's pretty much what they could have called him. So bald cape is generally quite nice and it's such a great call to what Saitama did, the foreshadowing, because when he fights Genos in for you got like for season one, he goes, Well, wouldn't my name be like the bald cape or cape baldy or something? That's his name. That's That was his genuine name. That got me a lot when I first read that, and it was still pretty funny now. And then, you kind of see the uselessness of the Hero Association too, because Sitch, who is honestly one of the few people in the Hero Association who's kind of, as we see, trying to solve issues, because Goro has declared war on them, he's there to mess things up, and Goro, and he's like, we spent 15 minutes talking about Garo, yet we spent two hours talking about hero names, and that's the kind of useless side of the Hero Association that you can see, that we see. Um, and then, of course, you know, but to be fair, at the same time, uh, they have confidence that, of, that Garo's going to get sorted because Bang himself has volunteered to take down uh, Garo. And as we know, oh, like as was told to us before, Bang is, uh, Garo used to be Bang's disciple, so Bang sees it as a responsibility to take down uh, Garo. And, like, that's just a, that's a good way to show Bang's going to be a bit more involved in the next few episodes, too. Um... And that's pretty much it, because I talked about Gar at the beginning, like I said, his theme song sick, and it made the scenes just really good. But yeah, and then we get the ending. I don't have a lot to say about the ending, because I've only seen it the one time, but this really is going really long, you should shut up. I won't, also because I've noticed some things, but I'm not going to spoil it for people who just watch the anime. Um, but for people who read the manga and watch this, did you notice who was in the fire? That's all I'll say. That's all I'll say, until I can say more. Uh, but yes, overall, I think there was a lot of things I liked because I was really, maybe not everything, but maybe that's because I really liked this segment of the story. Um, and like the pacing was fast and that kind of ruined some bits for me. But at the same time, generally people were happy about it, so I can't really complain too much. Um, but overall, still enjoyable. You know, I think it was still a good time. I, like I said, some things didn't make sense to me. So like they didn't show all of Saitama's face and Sonic's head. I don't know if that was a production issue or something, but I think they should have shown those kind of bits. They, you know, I think... Honestly, it's weird that more animation probably went into that scene with Fubuki's boobs than it did with, you know, some of the scenes like, um, like the Geno Sonic fight at times. But there was, a, but it was fine in any case. More like Fubuki.
Hey, I said it. There we go. There's the joke. Thanks for watching. Get out of here, please. I'm sorry. Go! But thank you for watching. If you like this, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> Um, yeah, what did you think? I'd love to let you. I'd love to know if you're, especially if you're an anime only or manga only or webcomic even. I I don't know what your opinion would be on this, but just let me know, guys, what you thought of it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.